Now that our Stripe webhook API is working really good, it creates a subscriber every time a user creates a subscription. Now let's use that information that's in our database when the user logs in. So whenever the user logs in, we'll update their token with the subscription information. And we'll take care of that in this video. To find the login API that's inside the accounts controller. And this API right here is where we'll be doing all of our work in this video. So what we want to do is get the subscriber after the user is successful at logging in. So right after this section, we'll go out and grab the subscriber. And we should now have that in our database thanks to the Stripe webhook. So I'll paste in a snippet here. So I created a variable called subscription. We're going to use our subscriber repository we were checking out in the last video. And this repository has a method get by customer by ID. And we pass in the customer ID that's in our user table, and we should get back a subscription. Just to remind us, if we go back and check out the database, and we look at our user table, the user or ASP.NET users, and this should have a column now called customer ID. And thanks to our Stripe webhook API, this should be updated with our customer ID. We use that customer ID to get our subscriber from the subscribers table. And the information we're after is the status and the current period end. This is the information we're going to include with the user's token when they log in. Let's pull our repository into our controller. So I'll add that right inside the accounts controller constructor. And I'll minimize this so we got more space. Put this on a new line and add it towards the end right here. And bring that in from our API data repositories, set up our private property. And now we should have access to our repository. That should take care of the error right here. So if the user never created a subscription, this is going to be null. So we want to do a check for that. But first, we'll create a couple more properties. And the first one's going to be for when the token expires. And the second one is if the user is a subscriber or not. We set that to false by default. Now we're ready to do our check to see if the user is a subscriber. So if we get back a subscription or if it's actually not equal to null and the status is active, then we'll set the subscriber to true and the expiration to the end of the current period end or when the subscription is supposed to run out. Now, if the subscription is null or the status is something other than active, we'll just set the expiration date for the token in seven days. Now let's add this information inside of our token. So I'm just going to pass that within the generate token method. So we'll pass in the expiration date and is the user a subscriber or not. Now we'll get an error here. We'll need to update this method. So we'll open that file up and go inside your services. The interface we will open this up. We'll need to update that and also the token generator class itself. And we'll start inside of the interface. And all we'll do is add on to the generate token right here. And it's going to be our expiration date and the is subscriber boolean. And we'll bring in the date time from system. That's it for this file. So we'll save this. And in our class now, we'll do the same thing inside of our generate token. We'll add on a couple parameters, our expiration date and our boolean. Then we'll add the is subscriber onto our claims. I'll just add that towards the bottom. So we'll have access to the is subscriber within the claims whenever we decode the token. And then inside the token descriptor, we'll change the expires property here to the expiration date. And that's all the changes we need to make within our token generators. Jump back inside the controller and you should have no more errors here and we're ready for testing. So we could save this and restart the application. So our login API should work exactly the same. So accounts login and we pass in our username and password, hit send. We should still get back a token and we do that. So that's good. Copy the token and we'll make sure our information is inside the token. And to do that, we'll go to job.io and paste our token in here and great so we're getting our information here so we are a subscriber and we are actually and our expiration date should be the end of the 30-day period in this case it's april 8th so that's correct as well 
So now let's use this useful information in our Angular application, the front end, and we'll do that in video 12.